Okay. Uh, now we'll go back to this problem. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to ask you to do before we do the rest of this is tell me what is f of nine. And G of 16. So see if you can uh, get those results real quickly. Okay. So we're pretty good with this. Yeah, with nine equals what? G of 16 equals what? Well, just to make sure we understand what's going on with this notation, f of x equals the square root of x. So if we write f of nine, x has been replaced by nine, right? So we replace all the x's by nine. And of course, there's only one other x, it's here. That's square root of nine. Unfortunately, that's one you can calculate. Okay. And g of 16, what? G? 16, but uh, formula first, just so we can refer to it, g of x equals x minus 7. And g of 16 equals, let me place x by 16. We placed it here, we better replace it over here. And we get 9. Okay? Now, let's see if you can tell me what F of G of 16 is. That's all right. Okay, well, uh, you did something really interesting with this and it was really good. Okay. But yeah, what you wrote down was, and I'll just kind of write it over here, you wrote that this should be a square root of 16 minus 9, skipping all the steps in between because you understand. What a composite is. And it says, I've said, you know, so you, know, you, know, you pick stuff up really well. Okay. Now you're in a seven week course and you've got some deficiencies, but boy, you pick them up quickly. Okay. Uh, so I think you got a pair of escaping that wildfire, but that always can't always be guaranteed if you don't evacuate. I'm not, I, I don't know what evacuation has to do. So my analogy is not really very good, but you understand. Sure. Uh, so, you know, work hard. I think you've got a real shot of doing it. Okay, f of g of 16 is what? Well, before I do this, I want to get the formula. Well, actually, I, I, I can do it uh, the way I was going. We know what g of 16 is. It's 9, right? So that's f of... 16 minus 9, which of course is 16 minus 7. F of 9, and of course up here I already set the up for that. We know that F of 9 is 3. Okay? So using what we already did, we can do this. Still, you want to be able to write a formula for F of G of X. Because, of course, that's one of the questions kind of build me up to answering this question. And I think you're going to understand this real well. Uh, since you wrote this down, I'm pretty sure you did. But let's make sure. Okay. Again, f of x equals square root of x. I'm going to write it like this. So f of g of x equals what? Well, I've replaced x with g of x. So I'm going to replace x with g of x. <laughs> okay. Got to be consistent here. There's g of x. Right? And of course, we know what g of x is. It's x minus 7. So that's the square root of x minus 7. So f of g of 16 is what you wrote. And actually, you wrote you wrote square root of 16 minus 7, which is correct. 
I get my odd numbers mixed up all the time. Actually, I just kind of stay confused. Okay, so anyhow, you got this, right? So you skipped all this and went right to this expression, okay? Which shows that you pretty much understand everything that you need to understand at this point, at least to get started on your composite functions, okay? And I think you'll be in good shape. You just got to get that homework done, okay? Get the homework done. And in the process, working in open math, it's real easy to get the homework done and let it go right through your head from one ear to the other. I don't know how homework goes through your ears, you know, words can. Uh, the, uh, uh, you, you want to maybe take notes, you want to write things out carefully and consistently so that you clarify your thinking so that it doesn't just disappear the day after you do it, okay? Because you're gonna have fast tests and they're gonna come up really quick. Um, one advantage of seven week class is if you do understand it, you don't have a lot of time to forget before you have a test. On the other hand, it's hard to compress mathematics. Uh, so I hope this works for everybody, okay. The, uh, let's say I was going to say something else. Get off on these tangents, forget what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, the domain. Uh, what kind of numbers can we use in f of x? What's the domain of f of x? It's x greater than or equal to zero, right? Okay. And we'll write this as interval notation. That's the way your text likes to do it. Okay. And it's, it's a good convenient way. It's, it's the most compact way uh, using interval notation. Okay. So the main of f of x is the interval of zero infinity, right? Because you can't put a negative in there. I mean, you can, you're not going to get a real number. You're going to get a complex number, or an imaginary number in this case, okay? And of course, we've been through that in this course. So we talked about complex numbers, uh, but you don't need that right now. Okay, so there's your domain of f of x. Well, this means that you better not put anything into the g function that gives you a negative. Okay. To get f of g of x, g of x has to be greater than or equal to zero. So because if it's less, if it's not greater than or equal to zero, it's less than zero, which means it's negative, and you can't put it into L. Okay. So, for example, if x is two, g of x, which is x minus seven, would be two minus seven, be negative five, right? So, if you want to do this for do f of g of two, you'd be out of luck. Because g of two is negative five, you'd be doing the square root of negative five. Okay. So, since the domain of f of x goes from zero to infinity, the value of g has to be between zero and infinity, inclusive of the zero. So, g of x has to be greater than or equal to zero. Well, we can write that as an inequality. Now that's an inequality, it's a very easy inequality to solve for x, just add seven of those sides, okay? If g of x is a more complicated function, g of x greater than or equal to zero would be a little more challenging, okay? But whatever, 
if g of x has to be greater than or equal to zero as it does for this particular f of x function. X has to be at least seven. If X is less than seven, X minus seven is negative. As long as X is bigger than seven, G of X is going to give you a positive number and, you can, and it has a square root. And so X is greater than or equal to seven. of the domain of f of g of x and interval of seven to infinity. It can't be zero to infinity because all numbers between zero and seven, not including seven, would give you negative values of g of x and you'd have a square root of the negative. Well, that's worth pondering. Don't want to spend any more time on that, but the point of this is that uh, you will, I believe, Encounter questions about the domain of a composite function. You have to make sure that your inner function, like the g of x, the inner function here, gives you a value that works for the f function. Okay. Okay, now can you write out g of f of x? And maybe even figure out what its domain is. Okay, now f of x equals the square root of x. We want to get g of f of x, right? Okay, g of f of x means you replace x by f of x. So g of f of x is g of the square root of x, right? Now g of x equals x minus seven. So g of the square root of x, x has been replaced by the square root of x. Just like up here, x was replaced by f of x, taking the definition of the f of x function, okay? Down here, we're gonna do that g of square root of x, and that's gonna be the square root of x minus seven. And then we can write f, f of g of x equals, sorry, g of f of x equals g of the square root of x equals square root of x minus seven. Now, what's the domain? What numbers can we and can we not put into this function? <clears throat> Well, before when we did f of g of x, any number at all can go into g of x, right? But some of the numbers we get are gonna be negative and they can't go into f of x, right? That's why the domain was the interval of seven infinity, if you recall what we just did. In this case, the inner function is f of x and you can't put just any number into that function has to be between what has to be non negative number, it can't be a negative number. Okay, so because f of x has a restricted domain, you can't even start with a number less than zero. Okay, so Okay. The domain can't 
be greater than the domain of your inner function. Because you got to plug X into your inner function, okay? Before you plug it into G. So the domain of F of X is this because, so the domain of G of X is this. Okay, G, the domain of G of X is zero infinity. Those generals zero infinity. And this is because the domain of F of X is zero infinity. And there's no further restriction because G will take just any old number, okay? Put any old number in here and G of X is gonna spit out a real value. So I say here, and G of X works for any old value. So there's no further restriction on your domain. Okay. If G of X was one over X minus seven, then X couldn't be 49. And you work that out. Square 49 is seven and seven minus seven be zero and you can't have zero in your denominator, right? So there could be other restrictions. And we're not gonna get into that just because of time. We've got 22 minutes and a number of other things. We probably wanna help you anticipate for your upcoming assignments. 